In this episode, Steam for Linux, Chrome for Ubuntu, and Sony's PS3 Other OS option. Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here at Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here, so do feel free to head on over to techpodcasts.com and um, you're bound to find a bunch of other shows over there that you'll like as well. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 10, Episode 13. From Foronix.com, there's a story here. It's official. Valve is releasing Steam and Source Engine for Linux. This is a big deal for the Linux gaming community, um, largely because it now means that uh, Tier 1 games will be available for digital distribution through Valve's Steam Engine, so uh, or Steam Delivery software so uh it, it's good stuff by all means check it out um it, it's gonna be a little bit before it's out but uh it's confirmed steam for linux let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode go to assist express if you provide technical support to clients colleagues friends or family have you found an easy cost-effective way to support them without being there in person the best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. I've been able to help friends learn how to use new software and fix family computer problems without being there in person. GoToAssist Express lets you easily view and control any other computer online so you can quickly resolve technical issues whether you're in customer support, technical consulting or management, or just a computer guru. GoToAssist Express will help you increase revenue reduce travel and support time, and service more clients. It's brought to you by Citrix. You know GoToAssist Express will be easy and secure. My listeners can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my listeners can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From TechCrunch, there's a story here entitled, The New Browser Wars, Will Ubuntu Drop Firefox for Google Chrome? Potentially big news in the world of open source software, friends. Apparently, Ubuntu, the most popular Linux distribution, is considering dropping Firefox for Chrome. Well, maybe for Chrome, or maybe for Chromium, the open source project that Chrome is based upon. Therein lies the rub, I do believe. What's going on is that uh, Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, is considering adding Chrome to Ubuntu Linux Netbook Remix, the next big release of which is due this autumn. So, uh, obviously, time will tell how things roll out. Personally, I think uh, netbooks are on their way out. Um, you know, they were a, a fine little dandy thing, but consumers are suddenly realizing that, gee, uh, I'm terribly limited. And, um, you know, the, the netbook really is a terrible experience if you're going to do a PC, try to emulate a PC type experience for it. So, um, I think that, you know, the reason why a lot of people got netbooks is because they just wanted something small and uh, easy to use and that sort of thing. And the reality is what they really need is a tablet-like device, something like Google and Verizon are going to release or are, are planning to release. Or if you're an Apple fan, I know this is like totally taboo on a Linux show, but if you're an Apple fan, you know, maybe look at getting an iPod, iPad or something like that. But uh, still, nonetheless, you know, a lot of people are, you know, myself, I've refrained from buying a netbook for that simple reason. It's like, why? I'd rather just have a tablet. <laughs> it, you know, it's like what I would be using it for would not, not be anything serious. And though, and therefore, as such, I'd rather just have a tablet that would give me a much better experience, mainly because I already have one of these. I just want a larger screen version of it. From Tech Dirt, uh, the we have uh, a story here. The Air Force PS3 supercomputer is screwed by Sony killing off Linux support. Now, 
We previously reported they've removed the other OS option. They're being sued for it and all that other stuff. The Air Force is none too happy about this news. The immediate effect is minimal simply because it's not hooked up to the internet and doesn't need the uh, firmware update so they can continue to run just like they've always been running. But the rub lies in the fact, as the article points out, that as machines fail or need repair, they're going to start running out of machines because anything that they get back from Sony is going to have uh, the the new firmware on it, which will not allow them to load their special flavor of software on it. So uh, therein lies the rub. Hopefully, um, it will come down to they can actually uh, you know get around that. From the register, there's a uh, story entitled here, Novell Preps Service Pack for SUSE Linux 11. That's right. Novell is close to launching Service Pack 1 for SUSE Linux 11 on the desktop and server. The article points out this stands to reason with all the new server iron being injected into the market and more to come later this year and an impending release of Enterprise Linux 6 from Red Hat and they just released Ubuntu 10.04 from Canonical. Commercial Linux distributor Novell has to either pull out a new version of SUSE Linux or crank out a service pack to keep pace. Apparently, they're going the service pack route, which makes sense. From Tech Pinger, I have no idea where these names come from, but uh, there's a story here. Igo introduced Maymo powered walk show NX7001 mid. The Chinese company iGo prepares to release a mobile internet device, NX7001 Walkshow, operating under the operating system of Linux Maymo. The iGo Walkshow NX7001 Mid has an 806 MHz processor, Marvel PXA310, and a 4.3 inch touchscreen with 480 by 800 pixels, two cameras, 3G, Bluetooth, and Wi Fi, satellite receiver navigation, system GPS, 128 megs of RAM, slot for flashcards. Uh, format is the micro SD mini USB port. Um, it can open documents in Microsoft Office, PDF, and video files and should be less than $500. Unfortunately, this all sounds fantastic, but unfortunately, you will probably never see it here in the US. So, for those of you who are in China or in countries who might be able to get this, cool. Otherwise, for the rest of us, not so cool. But Pretty interesting stuff nonetheless. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, I thank you for watching and listening. Please visit us on the web at linux.quicksurf.com. And uh, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. And uh, for those of you, again, who have not moved over to the new RSS subscription URLs, please visit us on the web. Get those. They're in the show notes and update your uh, pod catchers for the new URL. I've also uh, uploaded or I've, I've also created RSS feeds for all of the media formats I offer, not just MP3 and Aug Vorbis. So uh, you can get an iPod compatible uh, video file as well as an HD video file uh, via RSS subscription. So definitely check those out. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.